Jeep says that the new 2020 Jeep Gladiator is the most capable mid-size truck ever and they say it's 100% Jeep and also 100% mid-size truck. Those are really tall claims and I'm here at the first drive event to put them to the test against the main competitors. This is a unique opportunity to compare the new 2020 Gladiator against its main competitors. I'm talking about the Chevy Colorado, the Ford Ranger, and the Toyota Tacoma. I'm gonna take each truck on a quick driving loop, compare some specs, and also tow with the new Gladiator. And in this video, I'm also gonna tell you the fuel economy ratings, the pricing, and the driving impressions. This episode is brought to you guys by our friends at Max Leverage. It's a tool that gives you additional leverage for the tough job. And here we are working late once again on our gooseneck trailer. We need to switch the snack out. The tool comes in several different sizes. Here I have a 24 inch extension, which is pretty big. You can have a 30 degree angle like this, or you can mount it this way, where it's more of a straight application. It just depends on your access point. Moving. Don't break my wheelbarrow. Hold on. Don't break my back. Oh. You may help me. Ah! See why I had the wheelbarrow there? Woo! Use the link below to get more details about max leverage. You can buy a tool in a single size or you can buy several of them together as a bundle. But first, here's a quick overview of the Jeep Gladiator specs to keep in mind. The Jeep truck is only offered as a crew cab with a short bed and four wheel drive. Under the hood is a 3.6 liter gas V6 with the choice of a six speed manual transmission or an eight speed automatic. Now let me show you the competitor trucks and then tell you how the Gladiator fuel economy and pricing compares. Will a fully loaded Gladiator Rubicon be the first mid-sized truck to cross the $60,000 mark? I will get to that shortly. Jeep flew me out here to Sacramento, California and they provided the truck, the boat trailer and the boat behind me, and competitive trucks that you see in this video. Acceleration in the Ford Ranger. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is a 2019 Ford Ranger that Jeep provided for comparison. And Ford Ranger has one engine choice. It's a 2.3 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. And whenever I tell people this, that the Ranger only has a four-cylinder, they always ask me, but wait a minute, shouldn't it need a V6? And this engine has so much torque and power that I would wager it's the quickest of all four trucks that we're testing here today. And, you know, we're not drag racing these trucks, but we've tested the Ranger at higher elevations and it put down a really really quick zero to 60 time turbocharging works especially at high elevations this engine is rated at 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque it's made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission and ford rates the four wheel drive crew cab ranger at 20 mpg city 24 highway and 22 combined the ranger on paper with the epa ratings has the best fuel economy of the bunch. Um, how does it do on payload and towing? Well, the Ranger's payload, the 4x4 crew cab, is 1,560 pounds, a hair under the 1,600 pounds in the Gladiator. Maximum towing on the Ranger is 7,500 pounds. So these trucks are very close together, but if you want outright, out of the hole performance, acceleration, the turbocharged engine is very quick in the Ranger. There is no denying it. I would say the Ranger does not need a V6, at least in its current form here. The four-wheel drive crew cab Ford Ranger starts at 31,875 bucks. And out of these four trucks we're comparing today, it's the most affordable of this bunch. Tailgate challenge, who has a dampened tailgate? Colorado, yes? 
and the Gladiator does have a dampened tailgate. Ford Ranger? No. But a spray and bed liner is available. Toyota Tacoma? Yes, dampened. And a composite bed at that. Behind the wheel of the Toyota Tacoma, it is currently the force to reckon with. It's a segment leader in terms of sales in North America. Tacoma sells almost a quarter million trucks in the United States per year. And the Tacoma sales are not letting up. So what do we have under the hood here? Well, this is a 3.5 liter V6. It's got a dual fuel injection system and the rating of 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. In the Tacoma, you also have a choice of two transmissions, very similar to the Gladiator. You can either get this, a six-speed automatic or a six-speed manual as well. And of course, you can also get a TRD Pro, which is the most off-road worthy Tacoma of them all. This particular model that Jeep provided here for this on-road comparison is a TRD Sport 4x4. And when you consider the Gladiator Sport base model, this TRD Sport is actually a pretty good comparison as far as suspension setup and offerings. Let's take a look at the fuel economy and payload and towing numbers on the Tacoma. And once again, this is four-wheel drive, crew cab territory only. This V6 in the Tacoma is rated at 18 MPG city, 22 highway, and 20 combined. Maximum payload in the Tacoma is actually one of the lower ones in the segment, 1,175 pounds. And when you compare it to 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds, or 1,600 pounds in the Gladiator Sport, that's a big difference in terms of payload. Maximum towing on the Tacoma is 6,400 pounds with a four-wheel drive V6. So the Tacoma, in a way, is not focused on towing or payload. It has built up a reputation. It has been in the segment the longest, a continuous run with no interruption over the last, what, almost three decades. And it has a reputation for reliability and a very loyal customer base. And the Tacoma also has um, another engine option, which is a 2.7 liter four cylinder. And as far as their off-road offerings are concerned, this is not an off-road review, but Tacoma can hold its own with their TRD Pro lineup of trucks. I am in the 2019 Chevy Colorado Crew Cab 4x4 short bed. Let's just talk about powertrains and the GM Colorado and the GMC Canyon offer several choices of engines and they've been in the market for a few years now. They returned in 2015 and they've been making slow inroads into the midsize segment. And under the hood of this truck is a 3.6 liter V6 and this is the horsepower king as far as midsize gas engines are concerned in midsize trucks. 308 horsepower. The torque is not the best in the segment here, but still really good at 278, 278 pound-feet of torque, and it's made it to an eight-speed. So when you compare the Colorado 4x4 to the Gladiator, you're basically having the same displacement engine, a little bit more power, and an eight-speed automatic transmission, so very comparable. Of course, the other engines available on the Chevy Colorado are the 2.8 liter Duramax turbo diesel. There's also a four cylinder gas engine. So you have several choices as far as power plants in the Colorado. And this is not the ZR2, but this is a Z71 package. The Colorado V6 is rated by the EPA at 17 MPG city, 24 highway and 19 combined. Maximum towing on a gas-powered Colorado is 7,000 pounds. The diesel 4x4 Colorado can tow up to 7,600 pounds. So indeed, that Gladiator number, the 7,650, is best in class by 50 pounds. Payload rating on this particular truck configuration for the Colorado is 1,547 pounds. 
very close to the maximum payload of the Gladiator, which is 1600. This first drive opportunity doesn't lend a hand to direct performance evaluation. We're just here on a two-lane highway um, near Sacramento. But if you want outright speed in the mid-size truck, the Chevy Colorado is probably a really good choice. We've tested it in Colorado at higher elevation many times. And this eight-speed combination with this V6 is very quick indeed. So if you want a good performance, this is a good choice. So here I am in the Gladiator. This truck comes with auto start stop, so full silence. And then off we go. Yeah, power comes on, but you gotta rev this engine near its red line, and that's where maximum power is made. If you're familiar with Jeeps, especially Wranglers with soft tops, You'll be familiar with this Gladiator with the Sunrider top. You could hear wind noise. I don't know if it um, comes out on camera right now, but it's a little bit noisier, actually quite a bit noisier than the Freedom top, which is a hard top option, and it makes sense. But this provides you a nice option, also fairly cost effective, to completely fold the roof and get an open air experience even here in the sport it has several options i have heated seats i have a heated steering wheel i have adaptive cruise control system so you can add a lot of technology to a base gladiator which is nice there's that v6 the 8 speed helps out this engine quite a bit you got just more ratios to choose from and you can get in a better ratio quicker with this transmission. The manual transmission is still offered, which is great because fewer and fewer vehicles actually have a manual transmission anymore. There you go, engine start stop is again active. Let me show you. Here we go. You can always disable it by pushing this. It will come on. This sport model also has the crawl control feature that Jeep calls select speed or select speed. And that works in four low at up to five miles per hour. And here are all my other features, including the eight inch display with the Uconnect 4 system. I know you want to know the fuel economy numbers on the new Gladiator and here they are. With an 8-speed automatic, this 3.6-liter V6 is rated at 17 city, 22 highway and 19 combined. If you choose the 6-speed manual transmission, it's 16 in the city, 23 on the highway and 19 combined as well. And this is not class leading fuel economy. If you wanted the best EPA rating from a midsize truck with a gas engine, currently it is the Ford Ranger. So how do these four trucks compare? The Chevy Colorado, the Ford Ranger, the Toyota Tacoma, and of course the Jeep Gladiator. Well, here's a quick rundown. If you want the most horsepower, you gotta go with a Chevy Colorado V6 engine. 308 horsepower. If you want the most torque in a gas engine in a midsize truck, gotta go for the turbocharged Ranger. If you want the best EPA rating, it has to be the Ranger once again. Pricing, well on that, the starting price of a crew cap 4x4, the Ranger is the choice. But if you want the most payload, the most towing, and also the best off-road features in your midsize truck, the Gladiator has to be on your list. This is not an off-road comparison between these trucks, but just look at the specs. The Gladiator has the best ground clearance approach angle. It ties for the best departure angle. The breakover angle, it's not the best in this case because of that long wheelbase. But the Gladiator also has the best headroom out of the three other trucks that I drove today. And it has the best rear legroom and a lot of comfort and also technology features on the inside. Jeep provided the trailer and the truck, but one thing I've noticed, the chain hookups on the Gladiator are very simple, very easy to get to. That's really nice to see. 
Gotta connect the breakaway cable. Okay, now we're all good. Maximum towing requires maximum cooling and then the Gladiator, especially this sport model right here, the grill inserts are actually wider and the mesh is wider to allow better cooling for the radiator. On the highway with the new Gladiator and a 22 foot boat in tow. I'm only towing with the Gladiator on this first drive event because this event is set up by them and it's their rules and it's basically this two lane highway. But we're gonna get the Gladiator to Colorado and we're gonna put it on our Ike Gauntlet World's Toughest Towing Test up to 11,000 feet above sea level to see exactly what the Gladiator is made of. But today is just a first impression. So Jeep is going for class leading numbers as far as towing capability and payload rating. The payload is a little bit higher than the competition and the towing numbers are as well. But it's not that simple. If you want maximum towing in a midsize truck, you have to get this Sport, the base model I'm driving now. And then you have to equip it with a couple of extra things. You have to get max towing package, which gets you extra cooling, basically a slightly wider grill in the front. Of course, it has a higher capacity fan, cooling fan, when compared to a Wrangler JL, for example. Then you get beefier axles, wider track axles from the Rubicon and a 410 rear end. Then you can tow 7,650. If you have an Overland Jeep, the rating is actually lower. Overland can tow up to 6,000 pounds and the Rubicon, if you so choose, if you need to tow, 7,000 pounds for that truck. Now what about pricing? The Gladiator Sport, the base model, starts at $33,545. This is before the $1,495 destination charge. When you combine that all together, the starting price, MSRP, is just a hair over $35,000. And for that price, you of course get the crew cab, short bed, 4x4 Gladiator Sport. If you want to step up to the Overland, that one starts at $40,395 before destination. And then the Rubicon starts at $43,545 before destination. But this is not all. Probably wondering, where is the top end as far as Gladiator pricing? On April 4th, Jeep is doing something interesting. They're introducing the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Launch Edition. And this is a fully loaded Rubicon with unique styling features for the Launch Edition. They're gonna produce exactly 4,190 of them. And one lucky owner who orders a launch edition will get a prize which is one year salary that's pretty interesting but the price of the launch edition gladiator rubicon fully loaded is sixty thousand eight hundred and fifteen bucks yes it's a mid-sized truck that's over sixty thousand dollars and that has not been done before there's one thing missing on this particular gladiator and first of all it does not come with a fully integrated trailer brake controller. This boat trailer has surge brakes, which means the brake is built into the tongue of the trailer when we slow down. Uh, the motion, the momentum of the trailer actually activates the brakes. So we have braking action, which is good, but if you didn't have a boat trailer like this with surge brakes, you would need to add an aftermarket or in this case Mopar accessory. So how does the Gladiator ride? Well now with the load, about what 600 pounds of tongue weight from this approximately 6,000 pound trailer. The ride is nice. It's settled down. It's very stable. I feel confident. I do wish there was a little bit more torque and power coming from the engine, but overall it's a comfortable experience and I think it's helped by the longer wheelbase. The longer you make your wheelbase, it's actually good for towing. It makes the truck more stable and the steering is a little bit light. It's very similar to the Wrangler. I, I wish there was a little bit more weight in the steering to give it a little bit more heft and confidence. But as far as ride quality, it's excellent. The suspension didn't squat a lot when this trailer was hooked up to it. Yes, it's not a terribly heavy tongue weight. So I'm overall very impressed with how Gladiator is handling towing. The Jeep says that in 2020, 
There will be a turbo diesel option, the three liter next generation eco diesel with an eight speed automatic, but it's not available at launch. Although the Gladiator is more pricey than most of its competitors, I think you still have to check it out because it offers good ride and a lot of capability as a truck as well. Go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and first drive comparison reviews.